A new Porsche 911 is big news in the car world. People like me tend to get very excited about it. Earlier this year, the 992 version replaced the 991. We've already reviewed the coupe and now it's the turn of the Cabriolet. For my money, this is the best looking 911 convertible ever. For a long time, the roof line of these convertible 911s never looked quite right. But now, with the fabric hood in position, the car's silhouette is almost indistinguishable from that of the 911 Coupe. The hood can be raised or lowered in 12 seconds at speeds up to 31 miles per hour. Looking for more car review videos just like this one? Make sure you subscribe to the Car Guru's YouTube channel and tap the bell icon to turn on notifications as well. In time, there'll be a full range of 911 Cabriolets. There'll be different power outputs, two and four wheel drive versions. There'll be manual transmissions, PDK, the whole range. This car is a Carrera 4S. That means it's got the more powerful engine and the four wheel drive transmission. It's also got the PDK gearbox. The engine is a three litre flat six with two turbos. It develops 444 brake horsepower and 391 pound foot of torque. Four-wheel drive traction and a rapid-fire dual-clutch gearbox help the car to reach 62 miles per hour in only 3.6 seconds, and it'll run on to 188 miles per hour. It used to be the case that if you loved driving, you had to have the 911 Coupe rather than the Cabriolet. It's not so clear-cut anymore. This latest version has got the stiffest body shell ever fitted to a drop-top 911, which means the compromise in hacking the roof off is not what it once was. The biggest penalty is weight. Like for like, the Cabriolet weighs 70 kilograms more than the Coupe. The folding hood is very well insulated and when it's stowed away, it now takes up less space than before. It all means that if you're absolutely certain you want the drop top model, you have to make far fewer allowances than ever before. Brilliant news if you love the feeling of the wind in your hair. This new 992 cabin is so impressive. It just feels such high quality. It's a great place to sit. The touchscreen infotainment system, that's pretty easy to use. It's really clear, easy to find your way around the various menus. And the seating position, as you'd expect of a 911, is perfect. You can put the driver's seat on the deck so you feel really low with a steering wheel reaching all the way out to meet you. Yeah, the cabin is actually a bit of a triumph. The Cabriolet still has a couple of very small rear seats, although to make room for the hood, the backrests are very upright. That means they're only really any use for very small children or as extra storage space. Traditionally, 911s have had quite functional, almost plain interiors, but for the first time, this 992's got a bit of wow factor about it. These switches along here, for instance, and the 3D central rev counter, some of these other elements, the layering. It's actually, for the first time, a distinctive eye-catching cabin. This PDK gear selector thing down here is interesting. It's tiny now. It used to be a full-size lever, that you could knock over to one side and use to change gear. You actually can't do that anymore. With the roof up, this new 911 Cabriolet, the cabin is better insulated than that of any 911 Cabriolet before it. You still know that you're driving a soft top car because there's generally a bit more road noise, a bit more wind noise but it's very, very impressive. We're doing 47 miles per hour at the moment. We've got the windows up, roof down, and the cabin is really calm. It's not super blustery in here. And even when you start going a bit faster, the cabin remains pretty calm. If it does get a bit too windy, there is a wind break that you can flip up and settle that wind in the cabin even further. This is a very easy car to drive, particularly with the automatic PDK gearbox. You just slip through town effortlessly. It's got a really good, really comfortable ride quality. Despite those big wheels, the ride quality is exceptional. There's a bit of heft, a bit of weight to the steering, but it's such an easy car to drive. You could use it day to day without really thinking about it. As well as being the most refined 911 Cabriolet ever, this latest version is also the best to drive. You can tell when you're driving a convertible car with lots of flex in the body because the windscreen surround will shake and shudder when you drive over a lumpy, bumpy road surface. You can feel the whole structure actually flexing. And in fact, a really good telltale is the rear view mirror. When the picture in the rear view mirror is fuzzy and blurry, you know that the whole structure is vibrating away. In this car, 
The image in the rear view is perfectly crisp. It's kind of 4K quality. That tells you the structure is rigid. You never feel it flexing and shaking. It feels just like the coupe in that regard. And in fact, to drive, when you up the pace and start going a bit more quickly, this car really does feel a lot like the coupe. Although it is a pity the 911's distinctive rear engine feel has been lost, that's been gradually eroded away over the last decade or so. Even more of a shame is that this latest model only really feels exciting to drive when you pedal it as hard as you dare. Below that sort of level of attack though, this car can feel slightly numb, just a little bit muted. It's a shame that you don't get much back from it until you really start flogging it hard. Technically though, it's so impressive. Bundles of grip, really good transparent grip as well that you can lean on. It's got loads of traction of course because there's four wheel drive. Really good agility, sweet chassis balance. You can just about tell that it's rear engine still. And so it's so technically competent when you really hoof it down a good road. The steering is okay. It's slightly corrupted by the four wheel drive system, not quite as crisp as the steering in a two wheel drive 992, but it's still very accurate, very precise. One issue that I do have is the brake pedal. There's a good inch, maybe two inches of dead travel right at the top of the pedal that does nothing at all. That's very un Porsche, but the powertrain, superb PDK gearbox, and the engine is really strong. Bundles of power and torque, lots of energy all the way through and really sharp throttle response as well. Such strong performance. This new 911 Cabriolet gets closer than ever to the coupe in terms of refinement, design and driving dynamics. It's therefore the best 911 Carrera Cabriolet yet, but at £108,000 this 4S model is also the most expensive one yet. To tell the truth, it's still not the 911 that I would go for, but I'm not a lover of convertibles. If you want a drop-top sports car, this should absolutely be right at the top of your shortlist. Thank you very much for watching. Please comment below, like the video, please subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And remember to head to cargurus.co.uk to find a great deal on your next used car from a top-rated dealer.